Well, um, can you see me right now? Am I still at 144p like my last video? Thanks, YouTube. I mean, I was trying to talk about this thing back here and new merch, uh, like sponsoring my own video. And wait a second. What's happening? What? Ah! Ah! Okay, seriously, I actually don't even know if this works yet. As I'm recording, YouTube has actually had a number of issues uh, going on. It's really weird because when I private videos, it still looks like it's 4K60, but then I publish it and it's 144p. They're still processing and still checking my video from over a day ago. So whatever, we're just going to move on and pretend there's nothing wrong because I can't control YouTube, but I can control what we talk about on this channel. And I got a three pack of news to kick off your morning today. Uh, stuff that I'm pretty excited about. In fact, there's actually some really cool things in here about not just Game Boy and Game Boy Color, uh, you know, coming to Nintendo Switch. We have an update on that story. It looks like other platforms are going to be coming to Switch as well. So that's really exciting. I mean, N64, GameCube, anybody? Game Boy Advance, DS? Where does the buck stop? I guess we'll have to see. Uh, we also have... Uh, interesting conversation to talk about in terms of fanboyism and how uh, a certain particular uh, fellow content creator has been impacted uh, by it. And then we got to talk about the Tokyo Game Show and uh, what's happening there because there's some big games uh, being shown off that are coming to Nintendo Switch. And also, Nintendo's a publisher at Gamescom for like the first time ever. What does it mean? Let's find out together after I remind you we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. That's right. You can win the white Switch OLED. All you have to do is be subscribed to the channel. We will announce the winner in a live stream in the beginning of October. Hope to see all of you there. Thank you so much for your support. And let's get into the news. So Eurogamer put up a new article, essentially using their own sources to confirm that Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are coming to Nintendo Switch. We already had this story technically from Nintendo Life earlier this week, uh, and it actually started with the Nate the Hate podcast. So yeah, Game Boy and Game Boy Color games seem to be a lock to come to Switch, at least according to all the rumors and reports. And it seems to be coming this month, likely announced in a Nintendo Direct that we are just patiently waiting somewhat patiently waiting for Nintendo to announce. Uh, but what's more interesting here is Tom Phillips, one of the writers at uh, Eurogamer, put out a tweet uh, you know, where he was obviously advertising the story, and he mentioned that, hey, there are other platforms actually coming to Nintendo Switch Online that haven't leaked yet, and he's aware of. Essentially, ba-bam, um, we're getting more than just Game Boy and Game Boy Color coming to Switch, and he knows what those platforms are. They haven't leaked. So at this point, what is coming? Is it going to be Nintendo 64, which felt like the natural progression after the SNES? Is it the Game Boy Advance that many people were hoping was going to come along with the Game Boy and Game Boy Color? Is it GameCube, the infamous system that's never been on any virtual console before? Are we talking Wii? Really? Are we going to go that crazy to think Wii's coming? What about the Nintendo DS? I think, obviously, we can rule out Wii U and 3DS at this time. Uh, but, yeah, I, I feel like the whole of, 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 of Nintendo's gaming goodness and glory is open uh, season. So we'll have to wait and see what actually ends up coming besides Game Boy and Game Boy Color, which, again, is technically still just a rumor at this point. It hasn't been confirmed by Nintendo. But it is something that we are really looking forward to here at Nintendo Prime. And we'll just have to wait and see, obviously, what the game lineup is, because I feel like the game lineup matters even more than the platform. The platform just gives us expectations on what the lineup might be. Uh, but obviously, Game Boy and Game Boy Color is exciting, but N64, that's pretty hype. GameCube, that's pretty hype. DS, Game Boy Advance, all of that's pretty hype stuff, so we'll have to wait and see what's going to be added. I presume those platforms will be added next year. They seem to be on a you know adding new platforms once per year kick. Maybe Nintendo's actually going to ramp that up and add them more often. We did skip a year last year due to the pandemic, so maybe they actually have a, you know a third platform or really a second platform since they consider Game Boy and Game Boy Color the same platform. Uh, maybe they do have another one ready to go and they're going to announce it alongside the Game Boy and Game Boy Color, or maybe they'll have it come out early next year. So next up, this is a interesting story, and I feel kind of bad for a certain other YouTuber. Um, his name is Austin Evans. You guys might be aware of who he is. Uh, he's actually one of my favorite, um, do we call him a tech YouTuber? Maybe a tech entertainment uh, YouTuber. 
Um, you, you know, I, I really like his mystery tech series and uh, his banter with his fellow things, Broke versus Pro Gamer, and a whole bunch of other stuff. He's done a number of videos. He was actually one of the first YouTubers to go hands-on breaking down and taking apart and putting together Xbox Series X, which kind of leads to some of the current controversy. So for those that aren't aware, uh, there is a brand new version of the PlayStation 5 that has come out in Australia and Japan. Uh, this version of the PlayStation 5 weighs about a half pound less than the launch model. And so Austin Evans actually got his hands on one and made a video titled, The New PlayStation 5 is Worse. And that's obviously his opinion. Opinion. Now, he clarifies in this video why he thinks it's worse, and it basically turns out that while there is a slightly redesigned fan in the system, that's not why it weighs less. It actually uses more material, so it would add to the weight. It's because it uses a significantly reduced heatsink. The heatsink is almost cut down in a third, maybe even a half of the size of the old heatsink on the PlayStation 5, likely as a cost-saving measure, which Sony tends to do with their systems over time. They do a lot of cost-saving measures. And in doing that, it obviously weighs a half pound less. Now, he did do an outside vent um, you know, heat registration thing with a non-calibrated um, heat sensor that you can buy for your phone. And it showed consistently that uh, it is actually throwing more heat out the back of the system, suggesting it's doing a worse job cooling the platform than the old PlayStation 5, about a five degree Celsius difference, which is not insignificant. Now we did note in this video that the performance of the platform didn't seem to be worse. You weren't getting worse frame rates, you weren't getting worse resolution. Um, and he noted that this was likely just a cost saving measure and they determined that uh, the PlayStation 5 didn't need as big of a heatsink. It was probably over-engineered. Um, so he, when he said the PlayStation 5 was worse, he, it's just his personal opinion that, yeah, it has worse thermals, which makes it a worse system, but not necessarily worse in the ways that gamers are going to care about. And of course, the PlayStation faithful couldn't just let a man's opinion uh, B. There was a lot of attacking of him on the internet. People talking about how, oh, you know, his heat instruments aren't calibrated and yada, 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 which is fine. You can use that as a point of criticism. Although I will note, even if it's uncalibrated, as long as it's the same heat instrument being used to measure the heat out of the back of both systems, um, it's going to be accurate for whatever that, that actual heat instrument is is uh, measured too. It's gonna to be an accurate difference anyways, is what I'm trying to say. Even if the overall temperatures aren't accurate, it'll be an accurate difference between them. But that's neither here nor there. You could talk about how, oh, it's not a true measurement of heat. That's just what's coming out the back of the system. He didn't put diodes like on the actual die, like, you know, like Gamers Nexus and others uh, do. And by the way, it's funny because Gamer Nexus literally factually proved the PlayStation 5 is garbage at actually dissipating heat, even with that giant heat sink on the original, and he didn't get attacked. But for some reason, because Austin Evans is suggesting there's a new version that's costing Sony less money to make with a smaller heat sink, which is factually true, that outputs more heat out the back of the system, which as from what we could tell is factually true, um, that he is a shill, he is a shill for Microsoft, and that uh, he should be doxxed. That's right, people went as far as to dox Austin Evans, leading to him making a follow-up video. He's So, I've gotten into some controversy. Uh, this is not a video that I wanted to make. Uh, in fact, I've actually put off making this video for a few days because I was hoping that things would just kind of blow over, but it's just escalated, right? Like, I've been doxxed, it's sort of crossing some lines that I'm just not comfortable with. I'm purely talking about the old PS5 versus the new PS5, they're charging you the exact same amount for, and yet has a inferior cooling solution. Look, if you think I'm wrong, that's your opinion, and be my guest. If you wanna make memes, you wanna go make videos on why Austin Evans is a liar, go for it, right? Cash on the controversy. It's not like I've never done a video on something controversial. But things are, this is a PS5, right? The fact that like, the doxing and, and some of the, the more extreme elements of this, I think, are way out of proportion, right? I get it. I am making content. I am making things that you may not agree with. I stand behind the video I made. I stand behind my opinion, which, again, agree with or disagree with. That's fine. But the, the level of, of toxicity in the community, I think, is it's, it's, it's a lot. Right now, uh, not to name names, and it's not this is not me. Um, but people I know in the sort of this space 
um, have gotten like death threats and just like ridiculous stuff, which is, there's no excuse for that. We, all of us as YouTubers get our fair criticism uh, in return, but for us to make response videos to that criti criticism usually means something went beyond normal and getting doxxed is just not acceptable. It's the same thing when someone's live streaming and um, you call in you know, fake, um, fake stuff on them when you find out where they live, like uh, fake kidnapping, so then the police break down the door and potentially shoot them thinking that there is a child or a, a woman or some other person in immediate danger, uh, which is, can be even worse uh, when you're playing like a shooting game that's going to be outputting some gunshots, and then obviously the police officer is knocking on the door and shoot you, thinking that there's, you know, they're, they're trying, they think they're saving somebody's life. Um, the SWAT team is just doing their job, um, you know, because they take those threats very seriously. So it's it, it's not to the level of obviously his life being in danger, but getting docs is just wrong on all levels and just massively immature for a reaction to a personal opinion. You could have an issue with how he came to that personal opinion, but it's still just Austin Evans' personal opinion that the new PlayStation 5 is worse, at least in the cooling department, than the previous PlayStation 5. And he noted in his response video, like yeah his opinion doesn't change he's doubling down yeah you can argue there's better ways to measure the heat and better ways to get to his conclusion but the point is that he still feels the, the new playstation 5 is just factually worse than the old one and it's his personal opinion i don't know why we can't just take people's opinions at face value and i dealt with this as a youtuber as well not quite to the level of austin evans i don't have an entire fan base trying to dox me but um, you know, I, I've dealt with the backlash of, of personal opinions, and you know, having informed personal opinions, and having people not like those personal opinions. Actually, it just happened yesterday. There was a few angry commenters uh, because I criticized the pricing strategy of the Crisis Remastered trilogy on Nintendo Switch because we're paying forty dollars more than everybody else uh, for digital files. It doesn't really make sense to me, but it is what it is. And that's before you consider that it's a worse version. I'm not saying that they should charge less than the other platforms just because its performance is lower uh but at least the same right so like i got attacked for having that criticism which i felt was a pretty informed opinion uh and here's austin evans showing on video the reasoning he feels it's worse and even if you disagree with the methodology used to get to his conclusion it's still just an opinion there were even people attacking his thumbnail for crying out loud don't know what the problem with the thumbnail was. He was absolutely correct that, if he, that the original thumbnail that had just showed the actual PlayStation 5's heat sinks um, at a quick glance was kind of not that great of a looking thumbnail um, because people are scrolling, you know, you get about a half second to a full second maybe to grab people's attention with a thumbnail. And it, it just didn't, at a quick glance, like look like anything at all, it kind of looked like a blob. Um, so he obviously made some exaggerations in his thumbnail to just to draw some attention to it. And people said, oh, that's just inaccurate. I mean, okay, yeah, he's obviously trying to get your click, but is it baiting when in the video he shows you exactly why he feels the PlayStation 5 is worse? No, it's not bait. So that's a whole uh, conundrum that I just wanted to cover because I, I, one, I, I fully support Austin Evans and, and any other content creator's ability to post their personal opinions, especially when they provide evidence to back up that personal opinion, even if that evidence isn't exactly the 100% most accurate way to do things. And again, he doubled down in his video saying, hey, just because they did this doesn't mean that the, the PlayStation 5 performs worse in games. It also doesn't mean, and we can't even know this at this point, that the new PlayStation 5 won't last as long as the original PlayStation 5. Uh, we Literally, the systems haven't been on the market to, to know if there's a long difference between the two typically we know throughout history with technology the hotter something runs uh the worse it is at dissipating heat the uh you know overall that usually doesn't last as long as something that's better at it but again the, the heat difference could be neg negligible and both the components might die around the same time say in 10 years or something so i don't know i, I just find the whole thing to just be a fascinating deep dive look and, and it makes me wonder you know how does nintendo and sakurai like deal with all the backlash over decisions that they make uh whether personal or otherwise it, it's always fascinating to me to see fan bases um overreact to things that ultimately don't really even impact them just because austin evans provides some evidence why he feels the playstation 5 is worse and you can disagree with how he got to it that conclusion it doesn't change you enjoying your PlayStation 5, and it doesn't mean if you buy a new one uh, that's using the, the, the cheaper heatsink that suddenly you're getting a worse experience. You might get a slightly hotter room, but okay. I mean, I have a gaming PC in the studio, and it can heat this room up a lot. So 
I don't think it's really a problem. All right, so moving on to our last story, we have the Tokyo Game Show. Uh, the Tokyo Game Show actually comes here in a few weeks, and it happens every single year. It's basically uh, Tokyo's version of E3. Uh, it's been going on for a long time, and Nintendo has essentially never been part of it. But there were some hopes out there for fans because... This time around, for one of the, I, I think this might even be the first time in Tokyo Game Show history, although I'll have to go back and look. There might have been another time. Nintendo is actually listed as a supporting publishing partner for Tokyo Game Show, which got some people excited to think, man, Nintendo's actually going to bring Metroid Dread and others to Tokyo Game Show. That's really cool of them. Nintendo's never really supported the show, despite being the biggest video game publisher in Japan and being literally the most profitable and uh, most high-valued company in Japan. I know there's Sony and others might have a higher C, with their stock and everything but Nintendo has more money and zero debt and in the bank and just liquidated assets their company has the most core value right now today like if you had to if you had to liquidate Sony it wouldn't be worth as much as liquidating Nintendo this this came out a couple of years ago Nintendo is just a, literally the richest company in Japan um, and that's that's really cool even bigger than a lot of car manufacturers but here's the deal that's cool. Nintendo's going to be a publisher there. But Nintendo, because they're a publisher there, their Japanese Twitter had to come out and clarify that, yeah, um, we're not presenting any games. Sorry uh, for any confusion. Uh, they are listed as a publisher because they are there to support some of their indie partners. If you didn't know, Nintendo does publish some indie games. So it is, you could theoretically argue Nintendo is showing off games at the show games that they are publishing but they're just supporting indie developer partners that wanted to be at Tokyo Game Show that Nintendo might like as an example it let's say sports story is at this event well Nintendo is paying and publishing that game uh, but if the developer really wants to be at Tokyo Game Show Nintendo's not going to tell them no you can't because you're on our platform no, Nintendo's going to support them um, and try to push them at the show if that's where they want to be. Same with any other indie partner they have. But setting all that aside, because this is basically business as usual, Nintendo's not really going to be at Tokyo Game Show, just some of their indie developing partners that Nintendo's publishing. Uh, there actually is some great news for Switch owners at Tokyo Game Show because we're going to see basically new gameplay and trailers and all that for some big third-party games coming to Switch, um, in particular from Square. Uh, Capcom right now, we're kind of wait and seeing if any of their stuff is going to be coming. I think there's a Monster Hunter Rise update they're going to be showing off. Uh, but uh, Project Triangle Strategy is going to be there, which is interesting because Nintendo's publishing that game in the West. But Square's publishing it in Japan, hence why it's there. So Project Triangle Strategy is going to be there. Bravely Default 2 is going to be there, which I find interesting because... Uh, it comes out on PC before the show. Uh, it's already out on Switch. In fact, it's almost sold a million units on Switch. That was a new story this week, so that's really cool. Um, and I got some more news for Bravely Default, so stay tuned in a moment here. Uh, but yeah, there's also going to be that Guardians of the Galaxy game shown off again, which we all know is coming to Switch too. Now it's coming to Switch as a streaming game, but it's still coming to Switch, so it's still worth at least paying attention to what they're going to show. And obviously, we'll have to see how well the streaming version of it works when that game comes out. Uh, so... That's basically from Square Enix what we're aware of in terms of coming to Switch. We have to know uh, yesterday we talked briefly, you know, I'll link to that video even though it's 144p uh, uh, where we talked about THQ's situation here in a couple weeks as well where they're going to be showing off a bunch of games uh, likely coming to Nintendo Switch. Uh, but getting back to Bravely Default, what's really cool is there was actually a new interview that dropped in Famitsu where the creator of Bravely Default 2 uh, came out and said, yes, we're making more Bravely Default games. It's happening. Like we, he's basically confirming right now today they are developing Bravely Default 3. He didn't call it Bravely Default 3, but he basically means they're making the next Bravely Default game. And you know it's not some side spinoff game because he said, hey, yeah, we're going to make more Bravely Default games. But just know it's going to be a while. He says it takes about three to four years to make a Bravely Default game. So, you know, we're looking at 2024, 2025 before we see Bravely Default 3, which could end up being a launch game or a, uh, for the next Nintendo platform, or obviously a cross-platform game. Probably going to be on PC as well, but launching first on Nintendo because obviously Square and Nintendo have a really tight partnership with that IP uh, since it started on Nintendo platforms. So, yeah, it's really exciting to see the future of Bravely Default uh, at least being confirmed that, yeah, Bravely Default 2 is so almost a million units just on switch yeah we're gonna make another one duh we're gonna make it in three to four years duh we're gonna take our time and we're gonna do this right i like that i like that attitude and it's just good to know that this franchise isn't going to die or isn't going to stop at the second or isn't going to just go
go off in the spinoff territory and never get a third main entry. That's happening. That's great news. So now we could talk about the end of this video. All right, so look, obviously yesterday's video was a bit rough. I waited a long time to publish it because uh, YouTube was having some issues and who knows with this one. I'll probably just publish this one right away. If it's in 144p again, I apologize. I know some people act like I actually have control over the final product that's good shown. And I, I just want to clarify some things between, um, you know, from the viewer perspective to the content creator perspective. Because I used to be a lot like you guys where I'd get mad at YouTube when something didn't work as a, as a user. Uh, but then I'd also get mad at the content creator if they put out subpar content. And by the way, maybe you think my video is just subpar in general. That's a general criticism of my style of video or my personality or, you know, I don't know how I <laughs> pronounce things. Some people get upset about that because I do make some incorrect pronunciations. Yeah, that's how you say it, right? Or the enunciations. Whatever. I, I, I mess up sometimes. But uh, what's interesting is um, now that I'm a content creator and I've been doing this uh, for four years, I mean, I've been on YouTube as a creator for longer than that, but really the last four years with Nintendo Primes, really when I dove deep and cared about the actual people commenting on videos and all that. Uh, it's interesting because the only thing I really control when I upload is I control what the thumbnail is. I control what the description text is. Uh, I control the title, of course. So if there's any criticisms of the description, the title, or uh, the uh, thumbnail, that's fine. That Whatever. Um, the actual content in the video, obviously, as well, because I made it. I control what quality I upload the videos at. Right now, I do 4K 60 FPS. Uh, but beyond all of that I, I i can control whether or not i want ads on the video i don't necessarily control how many ads there are uh, i don't control the length of them i don't control if they're skippable i don't control what ads get shown so if like something weird gets advertised to you like if you're getting advertised baby butt powder or something on a video game channel i might feel a bit weird might feel a bit strange i have no control over what ads appear uh, that is strictly on youtube side i don't control what quality my video gets shown to you and i want that to be clear the 144p isn't anything i can do about it. i can look at the video in private like I can set it to private and look at the video and see what quality it appears YouTube has it at. But what I see it at doesn't necessarily mean that when I publish it, that's what you're going to see. Nintendo has this new check system, uh, which is checking your video for copyright content ahead of time. This check system is supposed to be helping out content creators by letting you know ahead of time if a piece of music or a trailer or something you put in your video is going to be copyright claimed and thus you're not going to be able to monetize your video. And so it's supposed to help us as content creators know, okay, maybe we need to go back, make a quick edit to that one section, eliminate it or replace the music or replace that footage uh, and then re-upload and go through the checks again. The problem is their check system broke yesterday and wasn't completing. And then it wasn't also for some of us also not completing the processing and thus spitting out a 144p video that's still 144p at the time of recording um, and likely not been fixed. So it's a really frustrating thing as a content creator because it makes it look like I don't care about the quality of content I'm pushing out to my end users. And that sucks. I mean, you think I wanted to push out a 144p video where I have this logo and I'm advertising our new merch and all that? Like, I want you to be able to see this. I want you to be able to see the merch. I want you to be able to see me. Um, I wouldn't be on camera if that was the case. I wouldn't, you know, I just upload a still image with audio if I, if I just wanted you to listen and not actually watch. So, I care. It's just sometimes it's out of my control. A lot of things are out of my control. This does not mean I'm not thankful for the YouTube platform. Unlike many people, I actually remember the internet before YouTube and how hard it was to host video content, how expensive it is. Um, like we had a video one, one time back on Zelda Informer, a trailer for a new Zelda game. I think at the time it was, uh, let me see, this would have been maybe with Skyward Sword and we weren't, we weren't on YouTube yet. Uh, so we hosted our own video uh, with our own custom video player that we had through an, um, an advertising partner who was providing it to us, but we still self-hosted the video clip. That video clip went on to get like 2 million views, which by the way would be like the highest viewed video on this YouTube channel. The problem is that all 2 million of those views were streamed off of our actual server and it ended up costing us over 10 grand that month just for that video in hosting fees for the download. So I could appreciate how hard it is to do what YouTube does, how expensive it is, and the platform they provide. I just want the platform to get better, and I want it to be more transparent. And bugs like this, um, 
are just unfortunately part of the game. Uh, we're just going to have to deal with it. So hopefully this video actually looks really, really great. Uh, and you guys are getting a wonderful experience. I'll try to do the best I can to make sure that's what it's going to be for you guys. But honestly, I don't have any control over that. Hopefully you enjoyed the video in general, though, and what I did provide and enjoyed this honest conversation about what it's like to be a YouTuber. Um, because frankly, it's actually pretty cool. I enjoy being a YouTuber. I enjoy the platform. I wouldn't be streaming and pushing, um, you know, guys to join memberships. But by the way, the best way to support our channel, if you do want to throw us a couple of bucks, is to just become a member. I would like to get us over 100. I think we're at 77 out of 100 members right now, uh, where you become a member of our board of directors at Nintendo Prime at different tiers. Uh, so you hit that join button for that. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe, comment. Those are great ways to support as well and help spread the love. Um, you guys are amazing. And I thank you so much for sticking by on this extra long video due to the end segment. Bye.